This episode is brought to you by Bulletproof Script Coverage, where screenwriters go to get their scripts read by top Hollywood professionals. Learn more at CoverMyScreenplay.com. Um, now, what is the biggest mistake you see screenwriters make? Because you work with a lot of first-time screenwriters. What is the one thing that you see like, oh, God, this is the one thing? Well, again, that's why I did the toolkit. Uh, they don't understand structure um, uh, at all. They think that they think it's uh, it's really not your enemy; it's your it's your friend. And once you discover the structure, doesn't make every single film the same. Even though the signposts are uh, in my work are the, are the same, you can rearrange them. Can't change a point of no return. Can't change plan falls apart. Can't change resurrection opportunity. Can't change top of the mill. You know, if you have those four things, you can write back. You go back. I try to. I try to. And satisfying ending. Mm -hmm. If you if if you have know what those are, you can write backwards. You know what your first act has to accomplish to set you on that journey. Um, the other thing too is I think that they're they uh, overwrite dialogue and um, uh, they say they're not able to write behavior into their scripts. They say everything. On the, so on the known di- on the nose dialogue, yeah. our, our 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 exposition all being being verbal. So I miss behavior, and executives don't like to read behavior. They like to read dialogue with a lot of white on the page. So tell me what's going on. But good writers can write behavior into their character, so that it's so like for Indy, it's being afraid of snakes. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a phobia. You know that that you know is going to show up again. You know that that snake's going to show up again. It's just when. So that structure is anticipation. Structure may, should make you anticipate, not go, oh, okay, well, here comes the part where, you know, um, you know, the monster's not really dead. Yeah, we know right. that. <laughs> right. But it's how it's delivered. And I get the, my, my favorite example is I always tell, I worked, I watched, I worked with Robin Williams, uh, who was, a, he and his family were great friends. And um, we, it's, uh, oh, I can imagine. Not here. But I watched Robin. The best structuralist I ever saw at work was Robin Williams. Interesting. Everybody just thinks that all this stuff came out of his mind. He just pulled it in from everywhere, you know, and all that. And he did have a great database. But I watched him film live his uh, stand-up show for HBO three nights in a row. And at the end of in, at the end of each night, he would take the card out of his back pocket and he'd start making notes and scratch things out and move, you know. Uh, and he would he would talk to you maybe maybe you had dinner before or something he would pick in your brain on something and he would show up in the show, but I watched him rearrange his um, his cards every night, you know to find to try to find that smooth ride that he wanted where, where one thing led to another but it seemed like it came out of nowhere, you know. And for those that don't believe me, if you've ever seen the history of golf mm-hmm. by Robin Williams. I've, oh, that was an amazing! I love that. No bit. matter how many times you watch it, how many times you see him do it, same fucking punchline every time. Yeah, and you're laughing at all the same places oh. if you heard it for the first time. That's yes. structure, you know. And all your friends that do improv and bedazzle you with, oh, how do you do that? It's structure. They have a set of circumstances and a set of givens and a set of signposts and a set of circumstances that they always resort to, to then invent inside that box. And. Yeah. It, and that's the interesting because I know exactly the bit you're talking about because I pissed myself every single time I saw him play do that, and I and it was so and I you know what thinking back when I when I heard him doing that bit which is a like why did the Scottish create golf yeah. and and how yeah. and then the story of the dude that actually creates it and yeah. how he builds stages sections and it's plotting and I never thought about that in joke writing because I'm not a joke writer or stand up. Yeah. But he actually structured that so beautifully because when you think he's done, he's like, "No, wait a minute, we're gonna do this, 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 eighteen times, and then yeah. we're gonna do, and then we they think, oh yeah, we'll throw it sand in, and we'll do this, and then we hey, let's do it eighteen times. You're just like, oh my god, this is amazing. Yeah. We're gonna throw this little ball a thousand, and you're gonna feel like it's a str- <laughs> we'll call it a stroke. That's right, because every time you miss, you feel like you're yeah, gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't argue." That he makes that up as he goes along, but it feels like it. That, that was his That's brilliance. Structure. That was his and brilliance. And also, anybody, you know, it's what they say about a comedian. He has good timing, or she has good timing, or she really knows how to land a line, or really. That's structure. Interesting. Interesting. So that, yeah, it was, it was, uh, I, and I, and I had a short interaction with Robin uh, about three months before he passed, and I, he was such a gentle soul. And I yeah. just, yeah. 
I, I don't know, because you were really good friends with him. There was something I felt off when I met him. I felt this kinetic thing that was coming off of him, even though he was quiet and calm that day. But you could feel that, that there was this energy. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but he was just like this, this energy that just kept going. I'm like, oh my God, that must be insane to deal with because he was that thing that you saw on stage. But well, yeah, to- he's actually, he's actually, yeah, he's actually very shy. Right. And, he, he was very uh, calm. And very quiet. quiet and reserved. And, but, but if you threw the match in the haystack, <laughs> you know, he felt that obligation to, he felt that obligation to perform and entertain and make everybody feel good. But I mean, when we did dinner with his kids, I mean, the, the kids dominate the conversation and Robin would just sit and listen, but he, he was very attentive that way. And, um, and, it was the side of him that you don't expect to see. Um, and also just, he had a, he had a lot of things going on in, in his, his life in himself anyway. Um, I'll do a Robin story. It's, it's sure. Please. Again, it's, it's, it, I, I, my wife and I were there with them. It happened, you know, what it did never show up in any routine, but, uh, and Marsha is his, his, the good, his incredible wife with the kids. Um, we're still very close. We were at, we went to San Francisco and I introduced him to Albert Dupontel, a very famous French comedian who he loved. And we all went to dinner at one of their cool restaurants in San Francisco, big high ceilings. And, and uh, we have a long table, you know, and everybody's looking at Robin, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, on the wall, there's a, a group that are from Texas or and I can say this cause I'm from Texas and, and one of them had big hair, you know, and they're loud and having a good time. And all of a sudden, we I, I see and Robin would you know he would do this a lot, you know. And I watched him looking up, and he was starting to get kind of nervous and like oh. he kept looking up and it was the, above this woman who's sitting across from us. He kept looking up at the ceiling, and we were all, and he's going, and we all sort of started sneaking peeks and and there's this giant roach <laughs> climbing the wall in this. Yeah, super held them ritzy high end San Francisco River. This giant roach, the fucking roach is that big. <laughs> and it's climbing up the wall mm-hmm. to the ceiling mm-hmm. directly above this woman's head. <gasps> and Robin's just going, Oh God, no, no. <laughs> yeah. And we're all going, Oh my God, is it going to fall? Is it going to fall? And she starts looking at, like, looking at the table. Like, and we're all like, oh. And he didn't want to call the manager over, Hey, there's a fucking roach. And Finally, it happened. It falls no. right on top of her hair. No. Robin falls out. He cannot control his laughter any longer. He is on the floor. He is guffawing. You know, he is sitting where the whole place is lit up. And she's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And he's like, I'm so And he's trying to say, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to laugh at you. And she stands up and announces to the whole restaurant, she points right at, right at Robin and says, Robin Williams, you're not funny. <laughs> and of course, then the whole. <laughs> and uh, he bought the dinner and everything else. But uh, it was so it was it, it, you couldn't. And it's like a sketch out, a sketch, a sketch out of uh, Saturday Night Live. Paralogue to No, it's something like an old oh, like okay. a Charlie Chaplin, you know, bit bit, you know, and we're all we watched it play out in real time. And it was hysterical. And also, because wow. they left the restaurant, but he bought dinner, and the manager came out and complained. They had a big fucking roach in her hair. <laughs> they had to get it out, you know, and step on it. And, oh my god, that must have been amazing. He got on his knees. He got on his knees. I'm so sorry. You know, you're not funny. <laughs> of course, which of course, That's my which of course everybody knows he is, and yeah. was quite and funny. He, and when she when she said that to him, he started laughing again because he's just like, oh, this is brilliant. This is I can't write this. You can't write that. You can't write you that can't. story. <laughs> and and to have sat there and witnessed it, it was even it was like we're kind of, I can't believe you could like it's going to fall, it's going to land right on her head. We're just waiting. You, you know, know the and, and it's I could just as you're telling the story, my director mind is like shot here, shot oh, on the yeah. road, shot yeah. on the close up eyes. Like you could just you're just like it's a Hitchcock scene all yeah. of a sudden. It is a, it is very Hitchcock, you know. <laughs> and 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 of course what what we all assess was a roach went up there to commit suicide. It had it. <laughs> And that was dive, that. Into, dive into a bowl of, of, of spray net, you know, and, and suffocate. <laughs> so, Roach, I'm done with this world. I'm, we're uh, out of here. I'm I can't, t- we're gone. And if I'm going to do it's this, over. I'm going to do this right. Let's go all the way to this. 
what's your matter? Did you get tired? You couldn't hold on? You know, would you, you give up? Oh, no, I'm sure Robin kept going. I'm sure he kept building but up a actually, backstory. Actually, top of the mountain. <laughs> and, then, and then point of no return and disaster. That's amazing. Resurrection That's... opportunity, you're not funny. <laughs> Change it, Robin. Anyway. Um. That's a, that, and, now, and now I can work that into a structure lesson. Okay. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You should absolutely work that into a structure lesson. No question. I haven't told uh, that story in a long time. Sorry if I digress. No, no, no. I think it, it's we. It's an amazing story, and it actually works about structure. You actually turned it into a structure uh, lesson as well. 